Hey guys, in this video we're going to continue our food delivery app from the last video. Uh, and this time we're going to start building the ordering system. And so uh, we'll start, we'll, we'll break this up into, into two videos because it's kind of complicated. In the first uh, tutorial we're just going to set up just a basic uh, models, set up some views, and a basic form to submit and handle the basic uh, submission logic. And we'll come back and add some more advanced features. Um, to really make it user friendly and, and more useful in the next time. Uh, so let's go ahead and just get started with just setting this up. Um, so first, we need to set up our media files. So we want to store a few things in our database. Uh, and one of those will be an image for the um, each menu item we, we uh, upload or we put into our database. And so we want to go ahead and install Pillow so we can handle images and set up our media directory so we can have a place to save it. So let's open a terminal window and we'll type pip install pillow and that will install pillow. Uh, I already have it so it's already installed there but um, that should install for you pretty quickly. And now with that installed let's go ahead and set up our media uh, directory and all the settings for that uh, for the media directory. So first let's hop into our urls.py we need to add a line at the bottom here. So we want to include this line right here. So we'll type static settings dot media underscore URL. And then we'll set this here in a second. And put document underscore root equals settings dot media underscore root. And then up here at the top here, we'll import those uh, lines we need. So we'll do from django.conf import settings. Oops. From. And then we'll do from django.conf.urls.static import static. So this line here um, is just setting up our media URLs and adding that, that path to our URL so we can access it. Um, in the app. Uh, don't worry about this too much, it just sets up the media for our de development server. Um, once you're in production, you'll need to remove this and do it uh, different based on whatever um, you're running on your server. Um, but for now, this will work for our development purposes. So now here we set this media URL and this media root. Let's go ahead and set those in our settings.py now. So we'll jump into our settings.py, scroll to the bottom, and then below our static URL, we'll add two lines. First one, we'll just do media underscore root. This will equal os dot path dot join. And we'll do all caps base dir. And then we'll put a comma and do media. So we're taking our base directory and appending on slash media to create this path. And up here at the top, we already imported OS, and we have our base dir right here. And so you can easily see here that we just create this this path here, and, and it just points to the root of our project. Um, so we're taking that root URL and appending media. And that's where we'll store our media files. And now below that, let's go ahead and set our media URL, which is to media underscore URL. This will equal a string, which is slash media slash. Uh, and that's it. Go ahead and save that. And now we have all of our settings set up to um, handle our media directory. Let's go ahead and actually make our media directory now. So we'll go back to our root here. Um, we'll inside here we'll make a new folder. We'll call this media. And now anything, any images we save will be saved within this media folder. And now we set it up here so we can access that folder. Now with that set up out of the way, let's go ahead and start uh, building our models.py. So let's jump into our customer app and to our models. And let's go ahead and build, uh, we'll need three different models here. So first, let's make a class for the actual uh, menu items. These will be the items that we actually are offering for sale on our, on our store. So we'll go ahead and just do a class menu item 
pass in models.model and then uh, we'll need a few fields here so first I'll make a name field which will be a models dot char field pass in a max length equaling to 100 uh, we'll do a description equals models dot text field which is a uh, text field is just a bigger larger input of text so instead of a single line it will give you that big uh, kind of block to type into and then we'll do an image uh, which is why we need to install pillow for this we'll do models dot image field we'll pass in max underscore digits no no no, no. and here we'll pass in an upload underscore two and this will tell it where to upload to so it automatically points to our media file and then any path we put in after this will just be appended onto our media URL so we're going to go ahead and add a folder here we'll call it menu underscore images and that's where we're going to save the images so now let's go into our media folder here and make that folder so we'll create a new folder and call it menu underscore images that's not every image will come into our media folder into our, media, our menu images and it will save it within that folder Back to our models, let's go ahead and add a couple more fields. So we'll add a price field. This will be models dot decimal field max digits equals five decimal uh, places equals two. And these are required fields for the decimal fields, so we'll still need to have those in there. Um, and now let's go ahead and add one more uh, field to this. We'll do a category field. And this will be a models.many to many field. And we'll pass in category. And we'll do related name equals item. So this made many field is creating a many to many relationship with our category model, which we'll create here in a second. Um, so all it's doing, it's saying we can have many categories with many videos. So each category can have multiple videos, and each video can have multiple categories, which is what we want in this case. Um, if you want to learn more about this, you can look up the different foreign key relationships in Django to see how all this works. Um, but all we're doing here is we're just passing in specific category items on this menu item object itself so we can access them uh, later on. Now let's go ahead and add a uh, str method and this will just format it better to make it look a little prettier. And so in this str method we'll just do return self.name. That's all we'll need for our menu item object. Let's go ahead and create our category model now. So we'll do a class category and here we're passing models.model and this will need just one uh, field on it, just a name field. So name equals models dot char field max length equals 100. And here once again we'll do a def str method to return self dot name. now let's go ahead and build a order model so we have our category and a menu item but once we actually create an actual order we want to have an order object that holds all of the menu items that are being ordered for this particular instance uh, so to do that we'll need to add a couple fields to a, um, a class called, we'll call order model we'll pass in once again models.model and now we need three fields here. We need when it was created. So we'll do a created on. This will be equal to models dot date time field. And we'll add auto underscore now underscore add equals true. <clears throat> then we'll add a price. And this will be models dot decimal field again. And once again, you need to pass in max digits which we'll set to 7 on this case and we'll do 
uh, decimal places once again of two since we were talking about money here. Um, we only want two decimal places. And now, lastly, we need to add a field for all the items that we'll store, that all the different menu items that will be added to this order. So we'll create items. This will be equal to our models dot many to many field again. This time we'll pass in menu item as the other model that's being that we're creating a relationship with. And then we'll add a related name equaling to order. And then finally we'll put blank equals true because we do want to allow empty orders at least at first before we add everything. And then once again let's go ahead and add one more str method. So def str pass in self uh, return this will be order colon uh, we'll lose an f string here so we can do curly brackets and pass in any variable name so we'll do created underscore on dot strf time and we'll pass in a string here we'll close all that off the string will be just a format which you can look up online but we'll do b then we'll do percent d percent i percent m uh, actually after the i let's do a colon and then after the m here we'll do a percent lowercase p uh, that's it we'll go ahead and save that so now let's go over this real quick so first we have this menu item that holds all of our fields for, the, for each individual menu item that will be on the website we create a category model and we link the menu item and category with a many to many relationship um, so many category, each category can have many menu items and each menu item can have many categories. And then down here we create an order model which will just store the actual order itself and any items connected to that order. So we create another many many relationship this time with menu item. So uh, each menu item can have multiple orders and each order can have multiple menu items. Hopefully that makes sense. Now let's go ahead and migrate these changes. So we'll open up our terminal and we'll type python, oops, type python manage.py make migrations. And here we create our three models. Now we'll do python manage.py migrate to migrate those changes over. And it looks like it's done and it added the customer on here, so we should be good. Now let's go ahead and build our views. Now let's go and make a view for the actual um, order screen to be able to place an order. So do class order. Pass in once again our normal view um, class here. And now within this order, we need to do two methods because there will be a form that's what submits the order. So first we want to get method, and this will be when the page is loaded, when the user first visits the page before they submit any order. So we'll go ahead and just do our normal Toss our quarks, just the usual. Now within here, um, we need to do a couple things. I'll make some comments here just to make this easy to follow, hopefully. Um, we need to get every item from each category. Then we need to pass it into the context. And then just render the template. But you notice this first thing, we need to get all the items from the category, but we have not added any items yet. So let's go ahead and jump back into our terminal here. Actually first, let's start the server. Python manage.py run server. So we threw an error here. Um, oh, because I didn't put anything in this function probably, just put paths just so it doesn't throw an error. Let's go ahead and there we go. Now our server is running. Let's go ahead and jump back here. Let's jump into the admin. And here we go. Now you see there's one thing we're missing here is we didn't add the models to our admin page. So we can't do anything with them here yet. So let's go ahead and jump back into our um, text editor. Let's go grab, let's go into our admin.py and our customer model, or customer app, I mean. Let's do just a simple admin.site.register. We'll pass in our menu item. Let's 
and then up here we need to go ahead and import everything so we'll do from dot models import menu item category order model now we'll copy this line two more times paste paste that change go ahead and change this here to category we'll change this here to order model we'll save that come back here reload the page and there we go um, so let's jump into our categories first and make um, some categories so we'll create one we'll call this one appetizers uh, we'll add one and we'll call it entree uh, I should rename this and just make it singular appetizer entree. We'll add one here, call it dessert, and we'll add one here and we'll call it drink. Uh, now let's jump back into our um, customer app here and in the admin page. Let's open up our menu items and add a couple of menu items here. So I'm just going to keep it very generic and just simple for now. Um, we'll just call it just app one, app one, uh, price, pick whatever, 12 or so you like 4.99. Choose a file. <clears throat> now we'll click on appetizer category. We'll save that. We'll add another one. Call it app two, app two. Add the picture. We'll put 3.99. Add appetizer. And now I'm gonna go do the same thing for the entree, dessert, and uh, and the drink category. All right. So now all those added, we can go ahead and go back to our views. First, make sure we save this file. We'll jump back into our views, and now we'll finish this. So now we have our categories. We can go ahead and do this first. Um, step here of getting all the items from the category. So to do this, we'll go to this pass, and we'll go ahead and add a line here. It says appetizers equals menu item dot objects dot filter, and pass in category double underscore name double underscore contains equals appetizer. And so if you watched the last tutorial series, we went through um, filtering and different keywords used to filter. Um, but just a quick review, we first will grab the category, and we want the name of that category. So we'll do double underscore name, and do double underscore contains, and we'll pass in a string we want it to contain. In this case, we'll pass in the entire string of appetizer. Now we'll do that again. Well, I should do it three more times for each of the other categories. So we'll paste this a few more times here. Let's go ahead and change this one here from appetizers to entrees. We'll change this here to entree. We'll change this here to desserts. And this here to dessert. This here we change to drinks. This will be drink. Go ahead and save that. And now we just want to pass these four into the context. So down here, we'll do context equals, and we'll do appetizers, appetizers, entrees, entrees, desserts, desserts. Uh, drinks, drinks, and now we'll go ahead and um, render the template. So we'll do return render request, comma customer order .html, which we'll make here in a second pass in context and that's it that's our whole get method we're just grabbing all the menu items and returning them so we can display them to the user 
Now let's go ahead and build a post method. So do dev post self uh, request star args star star quargs one too many there. Uh, there we go. And now let's go ahead and uh, work on this method. Now this method will be a little more complicated. We need to go grab all the selected items, get the menu item for that item that's selected, return the name and price and the ID to figure out some calculations on the price um, and to return some things later on. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started with this. So first, we're going to go ahead and create a dictionary. We'll do order underscore items. This will equal a dictionary, and within this dictionary, we'll put a key of items. This will be empty to, to an empty list. So what we're going to do here is we're going to store all of our items that are selected within this items key inside this, this array here. Now below this, let's go ahead now and get those items. So we do items equals request dot post dot get list, and then within here we'll pass in items with two square brackets. Now this right now will make no sense because we haven't created our template, but we're going to set the name of every input to items with square brackets here, and this will tell Django here that all these items we want to grab all of them and make a list with everything that's selected. Hopefully that makes sense. We're going to set a name equal to items, with two square brackets, and then a value equal to the ID. And so it will return a list of all the IDs selected in this items variable. Now with that done, we need to go ahead and loop through these items and grab the data we need. So we'll do for, for item in items menu underscore item equals menu item dot objects dot get and we'll do pk double underscore contains equals int item alright so what we're doing here is we're just looping through the items and we're getting a the menu item from the database that contains the ID that's in the list the current iteration of the list and now once we have the ID or I'm sorry, once we have the item, we can go ahead and save the data we need. So in this case, we want to get the price, the ID, and the name of this menu item. So we'll do an item underscore data equals dictionary. Within this dictionary, we'll pass an ID, do menu item.pk, and then we'll do a name and just menu dot menu item dot name, just like you normally would, and then price menu item dot price and now below this we want to go ahead and append these this item data into our items array or our items list within our order items dictionary um, so this dictionary right here order items and this items list we want to append it into this uh, list right here so to do that we'll go ahead and do order underscore items pass in a key of items dot append since it's a list we can append it do item underscore data now that's done <clears throat> and now with that done we need to go ahead and calculate the total price because we want to show it to the user after they submit their order so we'll start by just setting a price variable and set it equal to zero to start and then our item IDs equal to empty list as well now we want to loop through our, our items that we just added to our order items dot items array. So this list right here. Get all these items and um, add the price to the current price and append their ID into this items um, item ID uh, list here. So we'll go ahead and do for item in order items and square brackets items price plus equals item and square brackets price and then below there item dot ids dot append 
All right, now with that done, the last step we need to do is we need to go ahead and create a order object and append all of our, or add all of our um, menu items into this um, order item, or this order object in their items field. So to do this, outside of our for loop, we'll do order equals order model dot objects dot create. We need to pass in price equals price. So we'll pass our total price into there. And now we'll do order dot items dot add. And then we'll put do an asterisk item underscore ID. So we're going to our order object, going to its items field, and calling this add method, which are which you have on those many many relationships, you have an add method already. And then we're adding each individual item ID. So we'll do star item ID to grab each one and append each one instead of the entire list at once. And now with that done, let's go ahead and just um, create a context and render a template. So we'll do context equals items order underscore items pass in items and then we'll pass in our price as well so we'll do price colon price and now finally we'll do return render request and we'll pass in customer slash order confirmation that HTML and we'll pass in our context all right, so that was a lot. Um, you may need to go through that again to understand everything that's going on there. But just as a quick recap, we're creating this order items dictionary with this items list. We are then going ahead and we're grabbing all the items that were selected by using this request.post.get list and passing the name that will be on all of our inputs, which is items with square brackets. We are then going through and looping through each of these items that it found that were selected. We're um, getting the menu item for that primary key. This list will, cons will contain only primary keys, so we need to get the entire object now to be able to use it and get the data we want. And so we'll do this to get that. This menu item equals menu item dot objects dot get, and we're finding the PK that contains or really is equal to um, this current primary key that we're on. We're then creating a dictionary with our data that we need our ID, our name, and our price, and we're grabbing that off of this menu item that we just um, stored in this menu item variable. Um, then we're going ahead and taking that data we just got, and we're appending it to um, this order items items um, list. So up here we have the order items and their items list right here. We're adding all that data right in here. After that's done, we set two variables, um, our price and this item ID's um, list here. So the price obviously will be the total price, so we're just going to do plus equals to add onto the price, whatever it currently is, to get the total price. And that's what we're doing here. We're looping through our order items items, so this array right here, we're looping through that grabbing the price that we stored because of we have it right here so it's in this dictionary um, dot price to get to this price field or square back it's price to get to that price field and we're just plus and equally plus equals whatever that is to add to take our current price and add whatever it is that's in that field to the whatever the price has been added up to currently and then below there we're just taking our item dot IDs dot append the current item ID. Actually this right here should not be dot, this should be an underscore. So this list right here, items underscore item underscore IDs dot append whatever current ID is that we have up here. And then after that we create an order and we set the price equal to the price we added up up here earlier. And then finally, we add our items by using this line right here, order.items.add. Items is our many-to-many -many field. This dot add is on our many-to-many -many field by default. And then star item ID to add each individual item ID within 
the Sheshbi item IDs. So we're taking our item IDs list right here and just adding each individual item to this items field, which is what we're doing here with the star. And then finally, after we do all that, we create a context, we pass in our items and our price to show in the template afterwards. And then finally, we just go ahead and render this template that we'll, that we'll make here in a second. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that helped explain a little bit. Um, it's a little complicated, but that will do everything we need here for handling the form submission, at least for now, for this first um, tutorial. Okay, so with that, we have our entire views made. Um, let's just let's just fix this one thing right here and make this a colon instead of a comma there. And now we, with our views made, we can go ahead and build our templates. And so we're gonna need two templates. We're gonna need an order.html and order confirmation.html. Um, the order you'll see here being um, rendered here after the get, and the confirmation being rendered after the end of the post. So let's go ahead and make those files real quick. So I'm going to put these in just our default location here within our templates folder, customer. And right here I'll make two files, like an order.html. And then I'll also make a order underscore confirmation.html. And these files are kind of big, and so I'm going to copy them in and just explain them. Um, the code will be in the description on GitHub, so you can go get it there. Um, but I have the files right here. I'm going to go ahead and just copy them in real quick. And then I'll explain them afterwards. Save both of those. Alright, so first we'll start with our ordered HTML. And we'll see here we're using Bootstrap to set up a couple rows and some columns. And then you'll get to this point here where we have a form with a post method on it. And this will be our form that will hold all of our different items, menu items that, that the user can choose from. We add our CSRF token because we need to add that for any Django form. And then down here, you'll see we have a couple different for loops. We have a first a for loop for appetizers, for app and appetizers right here, where we'll go ahead and we'll display the image, we'll create a checkbox, we'll put this name equals items in square brackets like we put in our view, um, so we know this can go into our list if it's checked and then we have a value on that checkbox as well um, with app.pk and so this will grab the primary key of the appetizer and return that in the list which we explained in the views.py we need that to be able to pull the exact um, menu item out of the database uh, we pull out the name price description um, in the for loop and we do the same thing for each of the different uh, categories so we have a for loop here for the entrees once again, we create an image tag here, pull our image out. We create an input of checkbox with items with square brackets, and then a value of the primary key. And then we pull out our name, price, description, and the four. Same thing for dessert. We do the same thing, image, input, all the different fields here. And same thing here for the drinks. And at the bottom here, we just have a simple button that says place order. And once we submit this, it will send a post request and go through all the steps in our view. Over in our order confirmation, actually before I go to that, let's go back to our views. And you'll see we get all this data here, um, right here. So we're looping through all this data right here is all we're doing and displaying it to the user. Uh, so now back into our order confirmation. Um, once again here we set up some bootstrap and we have just a heading that says order submitted um, with a link to the home page on this email. We will add this later. For now, nothing will obviously happen with the email, but later we'll send an email to the user. Uh, and down here, we do an order summary. So we go ahead and loop through all the items in the order and display them the name and price here and the total as well. So compare it back to our views. In our context here, we pass in all of our order items that were in our items um, list. So all the items that we, we check marked will be in this items key here as well as the total price here and we're passing it into our template listing them all out here in this p tag and then um, displaying the price at the very end with a bold font hopefully that makes sense if not the code is all on github you can go through and read through it to hopefully understand it fully now the last step we need to do is we need to put some url patterns to set up all these views so into we'll go into our urls.py 
right down here. And let's go ahead and add just an order um, URL. So we'll do a path. We'll put order with a trailing slash. And then we'll do order dot as underscore view, just like any other class based view with a name equally in order. Just a simple view here, nothing different we've done before. Let's make sure we import it here at the top. We'll go ahead and save that. And now let's go ahead and just add this link to our index page. So we'll go to our templates. Let's go into our index.html. Uh, we'll have this button here, order now. Let's go ahead and change this button to an, a link. And then on this link here, we'll keep the same classes so it looks the same. But we're at an href, and this will equal, uh, we'll put our Django um, tag here, and we'll do URL, and then quotes, we'll put order. And then up here in our nav bar, if we go to our navigation.html, we'll find our place order. And once again, we'll do the same thing. Put a URL, oops, URL and quotes, order. And this order is just the name we set on our URL. So we put name equals order. So we can just put URL and quotes order here to go to that link. All right, let's go ahead now and run this and see how it runs. So we'll go ahead here and just do a python manage.py uh, run server. And with our server running, let's go ahead and jump into our uh, browser here. Reload this page. And there is our order. We can press this button. And we're getting a name error. Menu item not defined. Uh, let's look here. I probably forgot to import it. Let's jump back into our views. I'm going to here at the top. Yes, I didn't import anything at the top here. So we'll do from dot models import uh, menu item category and order model. Save that. Uh, come back here. Let's go into stop the server and rerun it. And we'll come back here, go back a page, refresh the page, and hit order again. And there we go. And now you'll see here we have our images shown up here. Um, we can check mark whatever we want to, to purchase right here. We have our prices over here. And this right here is our description. Right now there's not much there. Usually there'd be much more text here. Um, but for a little quick setup, that works well. Um, I have the same images, which is why they're shown up twice for each of my models. Uh, yours will always look different based on whatever you picked and set up in your admin page. But let's go ahead and purchase a few items. So we'll click on a few of these different ones. And at the bottom here, uh, we'll put some place order. And it looks like there's a small issue here. We are only getting one item showing up. So let's take a look and see why that's happening. So it looks like here we have an issue with our indents, our indentation. Um, this for loop, and this for loop is within this for loop, which we don't want. That was just a mistake here. So let's go ahead and pull all of this out and unindent it. So pull that back. And now we should line up with that for loop. Let's go ahead now and save those changes. Jump back into our browser. We'll go ahead and refresh this page. Now select a few different things. Select this drink and we'll place the order. And there you go. You see, we have a list of all the things we ordered and a total right here. Um, this is where we're going to stop for today. Uh, this obviously still needs a lot of work, um, but this is a good starting point. Um, we at least have a good form set up that can handle finding the different items. We've got our data structure set up for the order and all the menu items. Uh, so we'll come back next time. We'll add some more features to this and make this a really fully functioning ordering system. Um, but for now, this is good to go for now, at least as a starting point. Uh, all the code will be in the description below as well as the written tutorial. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.